who do I tell all these people is telling me to say, let my people go. And God says, I am who I am. I will be who I will be. I am the deliverer of all of these slaves who are in bondage right now. I am your bread from heaven. I am your sustaining life force. I will, whatever you're walking into, that's exactly who I will be for you to handle each and everything that you come against. Comfort, healing, a lawyer, a doctor, all the good stuff. It's all together and I am who I am. It's a promise that God has placed upon himself to us. He will be exactly who we need him to be. Not who we think God might want to be, but God knows exactly what we need. And God says, when God names people, you notice it's in the Bible, he gives people names. And it talks about that name specifically highlights what this person is going to walk into, what this person is going to do, who they are going to be. God names himself, I am who I am. So when we say this, the great I am provides for me. It's not just God as a provider, it's exactly who you need God to be because he's that big, he's that powerful, he's that mighty, he's that sovereign, he's that omnipotent and omniscient. He sees all, he can do anything, whoever you need him to be. That's a truth that I want to speak over your lives in this moment. It's not just a churchy thing, that is a truth. Whoever you need him to be.
Good morning to every believer and those who are of the Spring Creek family. We want to just say that we as a ministry love you. And we'd ask even at this moment, it's not going to be long. We're just going to take a few moments to worship God, to call upon him in this time to give him praise to give him thanks for that we know that he is God and beside him there is none other you may be preparing to watch this sermon that's going to be delivered by Pastor Cooper on this morning but find your own time to worship to worship the Lord your God Offering him the sacrifice of praise, whether it be the raising of your hands or with your lips. We're asking God that you bless us, deliver us, heal us. Even on this Palm Sunday, as you were preparing. To give your life for a world of sin. God, we love you. You knew each and every one of us before the foundation of this world. And we honor you today. We thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. blessings in your name. want you to stay encouraged during these strange times to know that God is still with you, God is still beside you, and that God is still over you. And that if we lean on, Lord, on the Lord, that we will fare well throughout this crisis. Also want to um, encourage you to still join us every day, um, except for on Wednesdays, 7 a.m. and 12 o'clock p.m. for um, our prayer line, that in our prayer line that you are able to hear prayers, you're able to hear testimonies, and you're able to participate. And I've come to learn and believe that the only thing that can change anything is really prayer. So join us um, every day except for um, Wednesday and the weekends um, for prayer at 7 a.m and at 12 o'clock p.m. for one hour. You can find the 
the prayer line number and the prayer line password on our website, which is www.myscbc.org. Want to let you know that your the pastoral staff, the um, pastoral staff and leadership is working hard to engage with you um, online, virtually, in every way possible. Matter of fact, just to encourage you that we had our, we still had our leadership meeting. So for, it was on vir it was virtual, and with the leadership meeting, we had around about 45, 50 persons um, on the uh, video virtual. Um, website and we was even able to break out into um, breakout sessions and then come back together the only difference between times in the past and now is that it was just online and we were able to see each other faces and and be able to have dialogue about things that are important right now within the leadership so we're grateful for for being able to do that at the same time every Wednesday at 12 30 we are having um, virtual Bible study so we are still in the book of Acts. This coming Wednesday, we will be looking at Acts chapter 9. Please, again, join us if you have the capacity, you have the time to join us. We will love to hear from you. We will love to see you. So if you can just join us um, for Bible study at 1230 um, on Wednesdays, you will do well as we study the book of Acts chapter 9. And again, you can find that information um, on our website, which is www.myscbc.org. And then lastly, my brothers and sisters, because we are expanding our virtual presence and because we are reaching folk and trying to do ministry um, throughout um, the internet and all over, that only way that is possible is because of your kind um, generosity. And we understand that we are in tough times and if you are not able to we understand that that we pray and we believe that after all of this is over that that God will begin to release um, more of his blessings and you'll be able to join us in in, in giving generosity giving with generosity um, after this crisis is over but if you still are able to we ask and we pray that you would um, share your generosity because your generosity will make a difference in how the creek do ministry and how we are expanding our virtual watch and we have set up three simple ways in which you can participate in um, giving generously the one way that you can participate is right there from your phone that from your phone if you can you can text 77977 when you text 77977 you will receive a link in a picture click on that link and when you click on that link you'll be able to make a one-time or look reoccurring um, generous gifts so that's one way the second way is if you just go to our website again www.myscbc.org if you look up at top to the right hand corner you'll see um, a button that says give online you can set up um, you can press that button when you set up press that button you will be able to um, give online and you can even set it up where it can be re recurring so we we push you to go either text for those who um, want to use their phone and then we push you for those who want to go on their website and then for those who are not comfortable with the phone nor the website we thank god that the u.s postal service is still running and we are still here to um, check the mail and that you can still send your 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 your, your love offering and your tithes um, in the mail um, so look on the address for the address of the church 5130 Woolridge Road Mosley Virginia and if you do that we'll have it and we'll be able to do the things that we need to do and continue on expanding the ministry of Spring Creek Baptist Church as we are still trying to be a church that's reaching out in the, into the community though we are in a crisis I thank God for each and every one of you and we will soon one day be back in the Lord's house at the Lord's timing and I've come to learn that as long as it's the Lord's timing guess what it is the right timing amen amen you be so kind and so gracious that we ask and we pray that you would turn to uh, Psalms 121 Psalms 121 again Psalm 121 I will be reading from the NIV version um, we ask and we pray 
that if you are there, it reads as this. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither sleep nor slumber. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is my shade, is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. I want to take a few moments, talk on a topic, the believer's safety net. The believer's safety net. Let us pray. Gracious and hey, Father, again, we thank you for this opportunity to share. We thank you for this opportunity to hear. We thank you for this opportunity to be transformed. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord and hey, Father, to still be a community, though it may be virtual, but we are still a community, and we thank God for that. We thank God for our family, and we thank God for our friends. We thank God for your protection. We thank God for how you provide for us. Now, oh, precious Father, we ask, as we have asked many times before, that you would be us, be with us in this time of proclamation, that we would be able to share your word in such a way where your children will be able to hear it, lives will be transformed, and that they would be encouraged, and not only them, but I too will also be encouraged by the proclamation of your word. We ask and we pray, Lord and Father, that you would continue on protecting those first responders and those who are on the front line as this virus is doing whatever this virus is doing, which has not caught you off guard, that you protect them and that you provide for them in a special way and that your presence would be known. For this is our prayer in Jesus Christ, we say amen. The believer's safety net. The psalm that was just read a few minutes ago, Psalm 121, is grouped together with about 16 or 15 other psalms. And all of these psalms are considered what they would call ascent psalms. And these ascent psalms are psalms that would remind the children of Israel in their traveling, going to Jerusalem and leaving from Jerusalem after worshiping the Lord, going back home, that these ascents would always, these ascent psalms would always remind them of who God is, where God is, the joy in the Lord, the presence of the Lord, the provisions of the Lord would always remind them that the Lord is there. And the reason why these ascent songs were so important during the, during the times of, of, of the life of Israel is because in their traveling going to Jerusalem, that sometimes they would go into valleys. And sometimes they would have to climb mountains. And that the route that was always around them, that they were covered by mountains and being in the valley and that they needed to be reminded because it was also a dangerous route. And sometimes it can be very daunting on the body and sometimes it can wear and tear the body that they would be singing these psalms and they would sing these psalms in, in, in unison because they needed to always be encouraged about, again, who the Lord is and what the Lord has done. That the, as we read them, that they are a text, but they were singing these songs as they would be going towards Jerusalem to worship the Lord. 
and that they would be singing these songs in unison, leaving Jerusalem, going back home. Why? Because the road was daunting, because their traveling was around different roads, and every time they would be covered by mountains and the, and the heat of the day and the coldness of night, that in their route, that it was never easy, but if they can just get to Jerusalem to the house of worship, if they can just get there, that they understood that God would be with them. And when they leave there, that God would still be with them. I'm reminded of I'm reminded of this particular psalm because I believe, my brothers and sisters, that this psalm is important for us in the day and time that we are in right now. Because most of us um, are feeling this sense of not being able to be in the house of the Lord. But I just want to encourage you that 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 there will be a day that we will be back in the house of the Lord and we are on a journey and we don't understand the journey all the way. But right now, the journey journey looks a little daunting and the journey looks a little a, a little crazy and it looks as though that it's going to be very difficult but if we can join in with the children of Israel and sing that psalm and and proclaim the words that are in this psalm that we will find some sense of peace from it because one day we will get to the house of the Lord and that's really where we are right now that some of us are desiring to be in the house of the Lord some of us are are desiring to be in the fellowship of believers. Some of us are desiring to hear music all around us and to be able to worship the Lord in a in a in the place of fellowship with other believers. But I want to encourage you, my sisters and brothers, whether you are home alone or whether you are with your family, I want to encourage you that you can still praise the Lord. Never let the location stop you from praising the Lord, that when you get up in the mornings on Monday through Sunday, that as soon as your feet land on the side of the bed, that you can say hallelujah, and I thank God for saving me. I thank God for protecting me, that you can worship the Lord, even if you are cooking, that you can begin to say, Lord, I thank you. I praise your name for giving me food to put on my table, to giving me the ability to make the food. And even when you are watching TV, that you can still tell the Lord, thank you, that no matter where you are that you can still worship the Lord. Don't don't never get to the point where you think location dictates whether or not you decide if you can worship the Lord because location is not about worshiping the Lord. That worshiping the Lord is to understand who the Lord is in your life and what the Lord has done over your life. And that's the good news of the gospel. So here it is in this Psalm, Psalm 121. We have the children of Israel making their way to the house of the Lord and they are traveling on some roads and these roads look a little crooked and sometimes they're going up a hill and sometimes they're going down a hill sometimes it's at the heat of the day and sometimes it's at the coolness of the night and there are different animals all around them and the possibility that they can be chased and the possibility that something can happen to them is very high and very much impossible and they need something to sing in unison that they would be able to know that the Lord Lord is with them and that's where our psalm pick up and I just want to remind you right here it says I lift my eyes to the hills where does my help come from it's almost as though it is a call and a response that you have a, a particular leader and a particular leader says I lift up my eyes to the hills and then the people respond and says where do my help come from and then the leader responds back to them and I just want to park right here for the believers um, um, safety net that is something interesting as much as I have read this text Donnell as much as I've read this text I've always made the association or the correlation between the eyes and the head and if you work with me for a little while you'll see where I'm going that that I always for some strange reason in my mind that I would always assume that the that the believers head was down while they were walking and 
what ultimately had to take place is that they have to lift their heads up. But then I read this text and it caught me off guard because as I began to really study and look at it, that's not what the word said. The word says lift up your eyes. In other words, the head was always lifted up and they had to lift their eyes up. You didn't catch me, but I need you to come with me for a second because you need to get this because it's very interesting to me is that we have to realize that where we are right now in this day and time that our heads do not have to be down as bowed down as though there is no God that our head don't have to be bowed down as if there is no help that our head does not have to be bowed down as though we'll never be rescued because when your head is bowed down you can't effectively move forward that your head has to be up because when your head is up you can look straight ahead and you know where you're going and you know that you will be getting to wherever your destination is and I just want to press to you my brothers and sisters that right now keep your head up don't have your head bow down know that one day you will be back in the house of the Lord but until then the psalmist instruct us to lift our eyes up you didn't catch me but I want to say it one more time that the psalmist inscribed to us to lift our eyes up not our head but lift our eyes up because when you lift your eyes up and then the psalmist says where to the hills I need you to get that for a second because as I try to break this thing down because it begins to get interest he says lift your eyes up while your head is straight lift your eyes up while you are walking and while you are lifting your eyes up I need you to lift it towards where the hills are and there you go right there I need to talk about that for one moment because here it is the here's the distinction I learned this from my brother-in-law my brother-in-law helped me out with this one day my brother-in-law was talking to me when I first got my license and my brother-in-law was telling me Kenny when you are on the highway and you are driving that that that, that the best thing that you can do is to always look two cars ahead because if you look two cars ahead then therefore if something would happen that you would know what's going on ahead of you it does not stop you from seeing the car in front of you it just changes where your focal point is and your focal point is now two cars ahead I just stopped by because I need to help us understand that that a believer's safety net really is depend on whether or not that we know that we can look to the hills because not that our eyes are on the hills our eyes are actually higher than the hills our eyes are looking to our God there you go right there I don't really have a whole lot to say about that besides the reality that the believers safety net is the Lord and the God that's still sitting on the throne and if I look to the hills and I look to the hills I'll know automatically where my help comes from from and it's interesting to me because the, the 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 psalmist then says well where does my help come from he I want to say it one more time because it helps us to understand it is all right to ask the question where our help come from never have nobody tell you you ought not to ask a question to the Lord you ought to be able to look to the hills but you ought to be able to ask the question in this journey and as our process of getting back to the house of the Lord no matter what's going on with COVID-19 no matter what's going on with the economic system no matter what's going on with the job situation no matter what's going on in this world that we ought to be able to ask our own question and our own question says where does my help come from but there's the tension in the text because if you're looking to the hills and your focus Focal point is beyond the hills to a God and then you ask yourself the question where does my help come from then what it suggests to all of us that our help comes from who our help comes from the Lord I just want to park right there because a believer safety net always got to understand that our help comes from the Lord and then looks how they were to the person who makes the call that says where do my help 
come from. They say it right there. It says, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and on earth. And we want to pause right there because, my brothers and sisters, when you look to the hills from where your help coming from and you ask yourself that, that, that question that you have to ask, where does my help come from? And if you're looking to the hills and beyond the hills, you see the clouds and you know that your God is still sitting on the throne, then you'll be able to say something real simple because it's a call and it's a response. It says, my help comes from the Lord. Well, who is the Lord? The Lord is the maker of heaven and earth. And I want to pause right there because if the Lord is the maker of heaven and earth, that means anything in between, the Lord got covered. You need to catch that. I got to say that one more time because it makes me a little happy. Is the reality is that if the Lord is the maker of heaven and earth, that means anything in between, the Lord already got it covered. You ought to get to catch it. Can I say it one more time? Because I need to say it again, Mark, if you're listening to me online, that if the Lord is the maker of heaven and earth, Conway, that means that everything in between, Skinner, that the Lord got covered. And I just want to get happy right there for a moment because that suggests to me that COVID-19 is not beyond God, that COVID-19 is not outside of God's scope, that COVID-19 is not something that caught God, God off God, that COVID-19 is in the scope of God. And if it's in the scope of God, that means God can fix it. God can make it right. God can heal us. God can do everything that he need to do for us. Why? Because it's all between heaven and earth, but not just the COVID-19 because I'm between heaven and earth. That means God protects me, not just because of who he is. It's because of where I am. And the last time I checked, I'm in between heaven and earth, and the Lord got me already covered up. Here it is, here it is, here it is. He says, he says, he says, he says, he says, right there, he says, my, 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 my whole safety net is, is, is right there. It's for me to understand as I start to make my way to the house of the Lord that my safety net suggests to me that I have a divine protection and my divine protection is in heaven and he got everything in covered. And then check out what else they say. They say something that's very interesting. They come back and it says, he will not let your foot slip he who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither sleep nor slumber. I got to pause right there because I come to understand something real quick. Is because he says he watches over you. I, I, I need to say that again. He, he, he watches over over Kenny. He, 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 he watches over families. He, he, he watches over all believers. And this word for watching, I, I had to think about this word and I had to dig into this word because because the connotation suggests that the word watch suggests that he is also a shepherd and a shepherd that is watching over his sheep. Now you need to catch this because I've learned that how shepherds watches over sheep is based upon their location. And when he's using watches, He's using the word watches as though that God is a watcher over his people or that God is a shepherd over his sheep. And what I've learned, my sisters and brothers, is that every now and then a shepherd will get in front of the flock because he's protecting the flock and guiding the flock. And then there are times where the shepherd gets beyond the flock in the back of the flock because he's pushing the flock. But then there are some times where the shepherd has to be in the midst of the flock because when he's in the midst of the flock that the shepherd is learning the shot the flock a little bit better but he still is the shepherd see you didn't catch that because what I've come to learn right now in this situation is that God is watching over us but not necessarily being in front of us or necessarily being behind us but that God is watching over us by being with us that's the good news of the gospel right there that we serve a God that is with us us in the storm. I don't know if you caught it, but I got to say it one more time that we serve a God that is with us in the storm. But not only is God with us in the storm, but God protects us. In other words, the shepherd can be in the front and protect. The shepherd can be behind and protect. And the shepherd can be in the midst of us and protect us. And I don't know about you, but I have caught, I have gotten to the point in my life where I come to 
understand in these last three weeks that the God I serve is protecting me by being in front of me. He's protecting me by being behind me and he's protecting me by being with me. And that's the good news of the gospel is that when God is with me, no matter what I am going through, no matter what you are going through, that if God is with you, that you will be able to get beyond whatever you are in. Why? Because he is your shepherd and he's watching over you. But then, then come here, I just got to figure this thing out because I got to make this a little bit more uh, uh, um, simple just because when I thought about this thing of watching and, and the shepherd, I've learned this, my brothers and sisters, um, I've learned this because as I, as I remember growing up that I was, um, my next sibling that was above me is by nine years. And, and, and then all of them, my sister, other sisters and brothers, about, um, it's, it's eight of us. And the other um, six that was uh, um, with her, they were all um, grouped together by maybe two years difference of a part. And because I was the baby boy, that whenever um, they went outside, they had to take me. And when they take me outside, my mother and my father would say, make sure you watch over Kenny. And, I, and you know, I was a little boy. They had to take me wherever they go. And when they take me where they go, they had to watch over me. They, they, they never said don't go here or go there. The whole notion was they had to watch over me wherever they go. And I learned this by really studying my sisters and brothers. And I need you to catch this because if you catch this, this is the good news of this text, really. And I can go on home because here it is. They would be watching over me while I was doing what I was doing. But check this out. It never stopped them from doing what they were doing. Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. You need to catch that. When they were watching over me they were watching over me what I was doing but it never stopped them from doing what they were doing can I say it one more time because I'm back because it makes me feel a little bit better because here it is they would watch over me with what I was doing but it never stopped them from doing and I want to pause right there because here's the God that you serve the God that you serve is watching over you but at the same time it doesn't stop him from doing what he's doing ah come here with me for a little while because that's the good news that I should be able to shout right now is that the God that we serve is still watching over us but it has not stopped him from doing the things that he needs to do how do we know that he watches over me but the sun still rose this morning he watches over me but the seasons are still changing he watches over me but the stars are still hung in the black canopy of the sky he watches over me and the grass still grows he watches over me and the earth still turn around on his axes all I'm saying is that God is still doing some work while he watches over me and that God neither sleeps nor slumber that's the good news right there. He's doing the work and he's watching over me. And the reason why he's watching over me is because if he, if I need him, he's right there for me and he'll be there with me. Can I preach just for a little bit here? Because here it is when we look at this text and we begin to unpack this text and we begin to see what this text is suggesting to us is that, watch this, that God, our safety net is the reality that God's presence never is absent. That no matter matter where we are in life, that God's presence is always with us. And there you go. I'm, I'm happy. And I really made my little point or two. And the first thing is that you got to know that God's divine presence and where he is. But the second thing you got to know for a believer's safety net is that you need to lean on the fact. Here it is. Lean on the fact that your no condition that you are in removes God's presence from being in your life. And here's the third one. I want you to come with me because when I read the text, it says right this. Is, and here it is. What it says, it says, the Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. In other words, that the Lord that we serve is a Lord that protects us and does not matter. He needs to protect us in the morning and he needs to protect us in the night. That's why you're able to look online right now and see the word being proclaimed. Why? Because the Lord protected you last night and guess what? The Lord protected you this morning and when you 
get to the evening time, you can say the Lord protected you. And when you wake up tomorrow morning, you will say the Lord protected you. And when you wake up on uh, Monday morning, you will say the Lord protects you. And when you go to sleep at Monday night, you will say the Lord protects you. And when you wake up on Tuesday morning, you will say the Lord protected you. And when you wake, when you go to sleep at Tuesday night, you will say the Lord protects you. Hear what I said. Monday you went to sleep. Tuesday you woke up. Wednesday you go to sleep. Thursday you wake up. I never mentioned anything about the coronavirus. Why? Because it does not matter. Why? Because the Lord is right there with you and the Lord is protecting you. Aren't you excited and aren't you glad that you serve a God that still protects you though there is a virus that's attacking the nation that we serve a God that already is protecting us. But here it is, here it is. Finally, my brother says, I want to keep this one thing from you. He says, he says, he says, um, the Lord will keep you from all harm and he will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. I'm done because if you ain't got excited already, I don't know what else to help you with because here's the reality. Your safety net ought to be in the Lord and knowing that the Lord will keep you. Not only will he protect you, not only will he watch over you, but he will keep you. Ah, uh, I got to say that again because it makes me excited. Not only will he watch over you, but he will keep you. I got to say it one more time because I'm Baptist and it makes me feel good. Right here in the text, it says the Lord will not only um, um, watch over you and not only will the Lord protect you, but the Lord will keep you. And there it is. I'm done. And I'm already happy. And I thank God it is Palm Sunday. It may not be Palm Sunday the way I'm used to it being. But right now, when I think of his goodness and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Well, how did God save me? He saved me because he watched over me. How did God save me? He saved me because he has protected me. How is God saving me? Because God has provided for me. And no matter what happens, between now and going to next week that you got to realize that the Lord is watching over you and the Lord is protecting you. And how do you know the Lord is protecting you? It's because he's your shade on your right hand. The right hand, my brother and sister, always will let us understand that that's the powerful side. Well, if you're always leaning on your side and thinking that you have the power, you will never realize who has the true power. And I just stopped by and I'm done. It's because we need to understand there is some help that's coming from human beings and that's no problem with that there's help coming from human beings how do I know that because of the package that was just um, um, brought about right now from our government is to let us know that there are some money that's coming available for small businesses and for small churches and for churches all across the world that's human help and here it is the um, energy companies they can't cut our electricity off why because that's human help here here it is renters you can't get kicked out of your place why because that is human help here it is your cable can't get cut off because why that is human help but every now and then we'll get stuck and believe the only help that we have is human help but I stopped by and I'm done because I want you to understand that there is some help that even when the human help stops there is still some help that is right there and the help that you have will never be unemployed the help that that you have will never go on furlough. The help that you have will never go on bankrupt. The help that you have will never take a day off. The help that you have will never go sleep. The help that you have will never kick up his shoes. The help you have is in the Lord. Well, who is the Lord? The Lord is my help. The Lord is my shadow. The Lord is my savior. The Lord is my protector. The Lord is my provider. That's the good news. Wanted to share with you on this Palm Sunday. Realize while you're on your journey, going back, getting back to the house of the Lord, I don't know when, y'all. I don't know how long it's going to be. But the one thing I've learned, reading this psalm, and the Lord is where my focal point need to be. As long as I'm still looking at the hills, my eyesight and my head is not down. My head is not bowed down as if life is over with, and I'm looking at the Lord, that I always know what he is doing and how good he has been. But not only that, I know that the Lord is watching over me. 
that he's still taking care of things that he need to take care of. Matter of fact, he's taking care of the COVID um, 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 virus right now. But at the same time, he's watching over me because the God that we serve can take care of everything else and still watch over me. But not only does he watch over me, he protects me. Not only does he protect me, he provides for me. My brothers and sisters, we can get through this. We will get through this because as a believer, we got the best safety net that has ever been known. His name is God. We thank God for the presence of God, for the protection of God. We thank God for his help. We thank God for watching over us. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. There may be some who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. And I want to take this opportunity, my brothers and sisters, no matter where you are, far, close by, it does not matter. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, I offer to you Jesus. At this present time in life, that's the best thing that you can have. I've learned and come to realize that Jesus has helped me. And if Jesus can help me, I believe he can help you. So if you don't know him as Lord and Savior, I give you Jesus. If you don't have a church home and you're looking for a church home, and if it just happened to be that Spring Creek is close by you, I ask and I pray that you would click on the button on the website, www.myscbc.org, and you'll see a button that says, Join the Creek. And if you join the Creek, my brothers and sisters, I guarantee you that we'll have a deacon call you before the night's over, and we'll connect you, and we'll begin to get you connected to the body of believers, that even at a time like this, we are still a church family, and we are connected one to another. So if you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, accept him in your heart right now, and he is your Lord and your Savior. And if you don't have a church home, you can click on the button and on the website, www.myscbc.org, and you can click on Join Spring Creek. You can click on Join Spring Creek. We'll have a deacon um, call you and get you connected to the body of believers. Amen. Today, of course, is first Sunday. And because it's first Sunday that we are going to share in the Lord's Supper, um, do not have to be in a particular place. You don't have to just be in a church house to do the Lord's um, Supper. The Lord's Supper is just an ordinance, and an ordinance suggests this. He says, when you do this, do this in remembrance of me. As Baptist believers, we come to realize that the bread is symbolic of his body and that the wine is symbolic of his blood. So my brother and sister, it doesn't matter what you have. If you got some, some bread, that's perfect. If you got some crackers, that's perfect. And if you got cranberry juice, that's perfect. Cranberry juice would do it. If you got apple juice, it really doesn't matter because they are symbolic um, of, of, of what it all means. It's not what it actually is. It's just the notion of do this in remembrance of him. I will be turning to selection number 598. I'll read that. And then from there, we'll be able to do the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> it reads as this. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will, set, will, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Gracious name, Father, we thank you for the opportunity. We thank you for the opportunity to share one more time, Lord and Father, in this ordinance of the Lord's Supper. We are not in the same location, but we are in separate locations, but the good news of the gospel is that though we are in separate locations, that you are still with us. And because you are with us in our homes, that we can 
um, participate in the Lord's Supper with our own elements because the bottom line is that you said do this in remembrance of you. And Lord, we ask and we pray that you would bless the elements that we have in our hands. And we thank you for it. We thank you for what you did on Calvary. We thank you for how you did it on Calvary. We thank you for resurrection power, which is coming next Sunday. We just thank you, God, for being God all by yourself. And we thank you for the sacrifice that you made Jesus on Calvary. Now we ask and we pray that you would bless these elements, that as we partake in it, not only that we'll remember what you did, but we'll be transformed yet again by what you have done. Amen. The bread, which represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Eat it in remembrance of him. The juice, which represents the blood that was shed on Calvary for the remission of our sins. Drink all of it in remembrance of him. In the gospel message, they said they left out, passing peace one to another. My brothers and sisters, I suggest to you that even in your own household, that you pass peace one to another. And make sure you stay protected when you leave the house only for immediate things. Leave the house for food, re leave the house for maybe gas, but make sure you take this thing seriously. Be protected, get what you need, come back to the house and take time to read your word, take time to pray to the Lord, take time to remember what he has done for you and pass peace to each other in your house. And if you do that, we'll be in great shape for when we come back in the house of the Lord one more time to worship him. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he smile down upon your face. And until we see each other again, God bless you and we love you. Amen. You are, you are whoever I need. You're whoever